Did you know that single women own 2.71 million more homes in America than single men? That's crazy. Especially considering that crazy. women couldn't even get a mortgage by themselves until 1974. This mm. has been a busy 50 years, I guess. Period. Guys, welcome in and welcome back. You already know what time it is. I'm back with another video. Don't forget, you enjoy the content. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button. That way this video can get out to more people like you to enjoy. Appreciate when you guys do that. I'm just here to say that being a homeowner as a single woman is not what's up. I've been a homeowner for just over a year and I'm trying to get some repairs done for my year warranty or whatever. Currently dealing with a situation in the backyard that is a whole puddle right there. My pool is just covering it so the dogs will stay out of it. However, a dog still gets into it. Mm. I had a plumber over here today because I thought that it was from like the septic or something because it smelled weird. But come to find out it's actually a f sprinkler issue from my neighbors. Apparently their water isn't draining right and they sprinkle their grass way too much. So essentially what's happening is a trench or a swamp in between our houses and then it just runs down the side of our fence which it is starting to rot the fence and creates a puddle in my back corner i don't know what to do i'm not responsible enough and that's why having mm. a husband would be really nice because that's oh. the only solution that i can find because men should be good at this right <laughs> i don't know if it's too late but at least she was honest i don't know if it was too late but at least she's honest sometimes people don't realize the predicaments and the situation they put themselves in until they're actually in those situation then they realize how far they dug themselves into a ditch sometimes that they can't get out so at least she admitted hey you know uh, it'd be nice to have a husband pretty sure there's other reasons why she realized it'd be nice to have a husband when you own a home because owning a home is a major responsibility but then the reality comes down to are you going to value that man are you going to be realistic about the kind of man you should be having or are you going to think that, oh, if I got a man and since I already was able to buy my own home, then if he can't pay all the bills or if he can't make sure this house is taken care of and I don't got to worry about nothing, then he not worth it. I'm going to be really controversial when I say this, and I'm talking to all of our parents out there. Um, buying a house does not make you successful. Don't worry. I did it by myself at 30, and so I'm going to walk you through why I would never fucking do it again specifically in California or LA, and I mean by myself, um, you know, I signed those documents as a single woman first and last name because that's how they do it. Um, if you have a partner that would split that with you, I think that's a completely different story again. Mm, uh, mm. She said it. She, she, she had to go through the hard way, but now that she's gone through it, she realizes it's a difference. If you, if you got somebody who you can actually build and have that home with, it's different. And trying to go out here and be a boss by yourself. It's a big difference. It's a big difference when the burden and the responsibility is all falls at your feet. Then when you have someone you can share with, when you have somebody who can help take the load off and you guys can work together to figure things out. Bought my house by myself in LA. Let's go over the pricing. I bought a townhouse in LA. A one bedroom, one and a half bathroom. It was four hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. I bought it in twenty twenty-one because I thought that was going to be the cheapest thing possible. Uh, possible. I had an interest rate of less than three percent. It was two point nine nine percent. Things that I could not have factored in: HOA increasing. My HOA from month one went to two ninety-nine, and then year three went to four eighty-six. The reason I'm talking about this is because my house is on the market. I am selling it for five thirty-five. Okay, so. I'm gonna minus broker's fees, improvements, escrow fees, title insurance, and corrective worker repairs. With that being all added up, my profit at the end of the day for four years is $15,206. I put 10% down, that's $46,000, okay? If I would have taken that $46,000 and for the exact same time period, so don't be like, mm, the market's not reliable, the exact same time period, February 2021 to June of 2024, I would have, I would have made a profit of $21,644. So the difference of that would be that I was up $5,000. The majority of home buyers these days are single. City girls are up a thousand points on this one. We get a big one and he is 100% right. Single woman here. Hey, y'all. Hey, I am a mortgage loan officer and I have purchased not only one, but two homes in my lifetime. 
both times as a single woman. I have one child. I have never been married. And I did not have a co-applicant that was a boyfriend. So, number one, ladies, this is why they continue to drain y'all of y'all pockets and continue <laughs> to put y'all into insurmountable debt. Because they cater to y'all's ego and get y'all to go out there and spend y'all money in the name of we don't need a man. But number one, I want to know which one is it. it do, where y'all getting this money from? Either Because all I see is people complain about how they can't buy a house. And now all of a sudden, oh, women out here just doing the thing and buying up all the houses. Which one is it? Because they just did a survey and the average American doesn't even have $1,000 saved up. But somehow all these women got money to buy houses. Wow. $1, I'm just trying to figure out which one is it. Not to mention she's a loan officer. So that's, that's a crazy. conflict of interest on her being on TikTok and selling y'all shit anyway. Clearly, she trying to get some more more applicants. Mm. But I'm just trying to figure out which one is it. Do y'all got this money or y'all broke? Can y'all get a house or y'all stuck paying rent? Oh, she explains how. Dollar house or that four hundred thousand dollar house. They are so prepared for home ownership. I don't know if men feel intimidated. I don't know what it is. But not only are they getting to it, they're getting to the bag by having not just one but two full time jobs. Oh. Now. Another conversation for another day where we can talk about it right now. Why are women having to work two full-time jobs? Like, where are the men in the equation? Well, they work them because they want to, right? And there's no men in the equation because they don't want them. <laughs> and there they go with the intimidation tactic, like trying to scare men or shame men into accepting just that they tend to be terrible people. Most men don't buy a house simply because most men only get a house is when they have a family. Period, point blank. If there's no family, there's no need for a man to have a house. We don't need that shit. So if I don't have a family, I'm not going to buy a house. Women now think buying a house is a status symbol. Mm. It's like, just like degrees, just like with everything else. Mm. Status symbol. True. Just like that new purse, that new bag that cost a couple grand, just like those new shoes. Know that they cost a couple grand. Buying a house is the new status symbol for some women. For some women out there who think that, oh, I bought me a home. I'm a boss now. I don't need a man. It's like, just like degrees, just like with everything else, is to check in the box and half of them buy houses without doing the proper research. And then a year later complain because their mortgage went up and they got problems in their house that they can't afford to pay for. Mm. You see it on TikTok all the time. Oh, the story, story time of how I regret buying a house. Home ownership isn't what I thought it was going to be. We that property tax <laughs> or that property tax end up biting you in your ass. You, it hit you with that unexpected uh, extra funds you got to come up with. You see it all the time from these very same women. They look at buying a house as a thing. That's it. Uh, something that they can brag to everybody about. Say, yeah, girl, I did that. Just another thing to say, yeah. I got a master's degree. I got a, I'm a homeowner. It's just another title to add to their list of things to put in front of the face of people that ask, well, why aren't you, why don't you have a man? Why aren't you married? Well, cause they intimidated cause I got a degree and I'm a homeowner and I'm a <laughs> boss bitch. And I don't that. Meanwhile, you just don't know how to be with a man. And nine times out of the 10, that's all you are, are those physical things and those titles, nothing outside of it. If you got to work two full-time jobs in order to pay, for a mortgage, you shouldn't be getting that mortgage. Mm -mm. But people like her aren't going to tell you that because at the end of the day, they trying to sell you something. Yeah, it's the reason why women, especially black women, hold the most insurmountable debt. Not debt, but insurmountable debt, which is debt you cannot afford to pay for because people like her and the dude before are going to cater on y'all egos and force y'all into predatory type lending and situations. See it all the time, buddy. Transparency post. I regret buying a house. I regret it a lot. If I could go back to January 2022, I would tell that girl, do not. Just find another apartment to move into because doing all this shit that I have to do for this house and all the unexpected costs, high dollar unexpected costs that I keep running into to be handling it by myself is ass. So to all you young women who want to go out and buy a home, I encourage you to really, really think about it. Talk to some people and really see the ins and outs. I mean, it always sounds good. Oh, yeah, your mortgage is only going to be $1,000 until they reevaluate your property taxes. 
and that bitch goes up two hundred dollars you know it's trash 85 degrees your ac is gonna go out you don't want to know how much that costs it's trash buying a home will always for many people in a lot of situations be the most important financial decision that they make in their life so when you see so many women who are doing that and end up regretting that choice you have to question how much thought they're putting into the long-term consequences of their actions. How far ahead are they thinking when it comes to what that purchase really means? Not just in the present, not just in the fact that they'll be able to take the picture holding the key saying, hey, I'm a homeowner now, to be able to say, I bought this, I did that, I have my own place now and I did it by myself without a man. Once you get past all those self accolades that you bring on yourself, are they really ready for what it takes to be able to keep up with owning a home? Home buyer regret between 2022 and 2023, 93% of people, according to the survey, regret buying a home during that time. They're stretched to the max on what they can afford as far as they, they probably stretch it to the max with their mortgage, with the interest rate, the price of the house, the inflated price of the house. And then they're not expect. They think that they're set with that mortgage, and the property taxes ends up ends up going up. The insurance goes up, housing costs go up. I mean, you're, something goes wrong, and then everything else is more expensive in the economy. All of a sudden, people can't afford to keep their home anymore. And this is why you very much you have to keep emotions out of buying a house. I know it's you get excited, you're you want that perfect house. And then a lot of realtors have been putting the FOMO, the fear of missing out. So if you don't buy right now, you'll never get another opportunity. They're talking about the interest rates like they know. No one knows what's going to happen with the interest rates. And as it looks right now, it's going to continue to stay the same or maybe even go up. But who knows? In reality, the vast majority of people aren't going to be able to afford a house unless those interest rates drop down 3%. Or unless you see houses drop 30-ish percent. So either way, you should probably be patient. Know exactly what you're buying. Know your budget. Know your limitations. And keep emotions out of buying your house. Can I vent to y'all just real quick? Um, I'm tired of being a homeowner. I am tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of people telling me owning a home is the best investment you could ever have. I do believe that to be true. That don't change the fact that I'm tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of the problems that it come with. I'm tired of all the responsibility, you know, mm. hanging on my shoulders. I miss renting. I miss renting. I feel like I have more freedom with renting. Now, I know when you rent, you're paying month to month and all that money is going down the drain. It's not going towards nothing. It's not investing in nothing. It's not. I know that. And I don't care. Mm. I, I thought about it so much. Selling my house and going back to live with my mother. <laughs> For I wasn't sure if she was speaking from a perspective of a woman in a relationship. I was about 95 percent sure that she was talking from a single woman's perspective. But uh, that confirmed it. Getting so hard that she wants to go back and live with her mother. I'm not even trying to say that it just becomes this easy task owning a home as soon as you get married and you decide to do it that way. But you can't deny the fact that when you're talking about a purchase as large as buying a home, that's something that if you have more than one person that is going to be responsible for it, that is just as invested as you are in it. And <laughs> it's typically going to be a husband to a woman who's looking for a heterosexual relationship is going to be far easier and have far less stress. Because why not? I don't have kids. I don't have a man. I don't mm. have any drama that I would bring my mama and I can pay. Mind you, my mama still live in the projects and in income based housing. She doesn't pay rent anyway. We'll mm. be over there living like Kings and Queens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, I feel like the only thing that I would miss owning my home or you know moving back with my mom or just whatever is the privacy i do not like people all the time i do not like noise you know 
but when you move in with somebody or any sort of living adjustment, then you have to understand what that comes with. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just tired. Not saying that I will go live back with my mama. Not saying that I will go back renting. Not saying that I'll get a roommate. You know, all those things is an option. I'm just tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of the issues that arise. And I look left and I look right. And the responsibility is still on you. Like, there's just no help. We all have choices. And this thing called life, we all have choices. We make every single day. Every Everybody makes choices every day on how they get to live their life. I'm so tired. Owning a home, I don't give a damn. Owning a home is not what it used to be. I used to take pride in owning a home. I want to sell my home bad. Let it be somebody else's problem. And I like my house. Like when I bought it in 2020, it was newly renovated. I, I you know, I bought it during COVID and I paid pennies for it. And, for, and my mortgage is cheap and I know I shouldn't complain, honey, but I'm still going to complain because it's mine and I got to pay for it and I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do. And I'm just tired of the responsibility, if I can only be honest. I feel like I had less responsibility with renting. <laughs> like if I had one problem, I can call the landlord. You know, I'm calling the maintenance man. I'm calling somebody else to mm. fix the problem. I got a problem now. I can I can call somebody, but then my phone going to ring because I got to fix it. Oof. I mean, listen, that's real life. That's real life for a lot of people. Listen, there's a lot of people in relationships who have a hard enough time keeping up with all of the responsibilities that come along with owning your own home. So thinking that somehow it's a brag to say, oh, I'm doing it by myself. Listen, if you're able to do it and you're able to do it well, then more kudos to you. Round of applause. But I think that what's going on here is that there are a lot of women who are kind of celebrating this idea that they're doing so much better than men are. They're buying homes that put them into debt. They're going to college, getting more degrees that put them into debt. They're doing all these things that only add more debt into their life. But because they're doing it without a man, somehow they see it as a status symbol or a notch on their belt as far as an accomplishment. Listen, unless you're someone who's really looking to get into investment properties, which aren't a lot of people in the grand scheme of things, then I think owning a home should be left for when you're ready to start a family, settle down, have some children. That's part of your life because yeah, the responsibility and the maintenance and the upkeep can be far more than what most people want to actually take on and endure. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think about that? Are you yourself looking to buy a home? Are you a single guy out there and you're looking to buy a home? Or if not, what are you looking to do? Are you just saying, Hey, I don't need a home because it's just me. I'm by myself. I'm cool with a nice little apartment spot, condo, uh, in the city, wherever you're at. Or are you looking to get an investment property? Let me know your comments, thoughts, and feedback on, my, on this subject that we talked about today. Drop them down below. You know, I appreciate when you guys take the time to chime in. Don't forget, you can support this channel by hitting the like and that subscribe button. And as always, until next time.